Hey, Brett, how you doing? Hey, Adam, how you doing? Good, thanks. Um, hey, uh, can you, uh, first of all, uh, can you just go over the uh, two guys you picked uh, today and how they fit in? Yeah, well, uh, first off, uh, you know, um, when the day started, had a chance to select uh, Willie Gay Jr. And uh, certainly we were, uh, we had our eye on, on Willie when, when the day started. He was a guy that, w that we circled. And, um, you know, because he, he was suspended, you, you know, and, and there wasn't a large volume of work this year on, on his tape, uh, we didn't know where the league would be. We were certainly high on him from the get-go, um, both Coach Spags and, and Coach uh, Matt House. Uh, you know, really like this guy too, but uh, you took got a guy that really, I mean, uh, he ran uh, faster than, than most of these secondary guys out there at, at 4'4", 245 pounds, 39 vert, 11'4", broad. And I think if this guy comes back to school next year, Adam plays a full season and is healthy, you know, you're looking at a first round pick. Uh, the guy's got tremendous upside. Uh, guy can play Sam. Uh, he can play Mike or Will. So I think he'll have a chance to come in right right away and, and um, get with our staff and, and bounce in there at Mike and back bounce in there at Sam Linebacker. So um, just a guy that's super talented and, um, you know, we, we were fired up to get. And then uh, in the in the third round there, sometimes it, the draft goes in different directions. And, you know, we've, we've, we've had some success with finding some value guys in the third round. Uh, and, you know, you sit there and you look at Lucas Niang. Uh, he, he's a guy – that, um, I mean, shoot, just two years ago, he was asked to block bo both Bosa and, and um, Chase Young, did a pretty good job. Guy that can play some guard, too. So, you know, we think he can come in right away, and, and, and the kid is smart and, and challenge a guard, and then potentially work and develop uh, at both right and left tackle. So two guys that we think have tremendous upside and, and are, are both extremely versatile. One follow-up on uh, Edward Zolaire. Um I, I know you're just looking for good players, and that's the first concern, but – um, do you feel like to, to maximize Pat's talents, you, you need to surround him, keep him surrounded with good offensive skill players? Yeah, well, I think it just – it really just heightens every level of his game. I mean, he's obviously the best player in the NFL, and, and you know, the more weapons you give him and, and the more uh, – you know, the, the more uh, selections he has out there on, on Sunday, whether it be on the outside in the vertical game with McColl or Tyreek or inside with Travis and Sammy, and then just the running game. You know, you talk about just situational football and, and down distances. Uh, I talked to Coach about this. You know, you, you look at just running plays and, and you know, during the course of a game, two-yard carries uh, when it's blocked up. All of a sudden, you get a guy like Clyde Edwards-Hilaire and, and, you know, second eights now become second and twos and second and threes. And when you're, when you're faced with second and twos and second and threes with Pat Mahomes, I, I really don't know how you defend that. Uh, when you can just take shots on second and two or third and two and third and ones, just because you know, um, or excuse me, second and twos, second and threes, you can take shots because you know, if you don't get it, you still have third down. So this guy has that ability to win the first down. Always, you know, you want to win first downs and, and keep the chains moving, put yourself in good down a distant situation. So when you have a guy that can create plays and put you into those second and twos and second and ones, uh, it just makes your offense that more, much more difficult to stop. All right, we'll go to you, Herbie. Hey, good evening, Brett. Hey, Herbie. Hey, specific to Willie Gay, uh, Coach Andy Reid was, was mentioning earlier on the call, um, he complimented the background checks that you did as well as the scouting team. But as a general manager, what do you need to hear to gain a comfort level when you're dealing with a player with red flags? Well, I mean, you know, you need to hear everything and you have to do the homework. Um, uh, the one good thing with Willie Gay, I mean, you know, every, everything that um, everybody talked to and everything he did, I mean, everybody loved the guy. I mean, you know, I, I'm sure you had a chance to talk to him, talk to coach. I mean, he had a couple incidents at college, but, I mean, this wasn't a guy that, I mean, you certainly, you have a lot of players on the board and, and certain guys, um, there's no issues. And certain guys, there's um, things you really have to work through. But I mean, every guy, whether they be um, no issues or, or some issues, I mean, you're going to do a ton of work on all these guys because you really don't know until you, until you get into the school and, and our area scouts do a great job. And, and you're going to talk to coaches and trainers and academic advisors and high school coaches um, if they went to a junior college or junior college coaches. So w when you get into that process and you go through a guy like Willie Gay and everybody that coached him loves the kid, uh, you feel pretty good about where you are. And, and we're certainly excited to have him and, and you know, think he's going to be a, a great compliment both on the field and in the locker room. All right, we'll go to Nate Taylor. 
Hey, Brad, in terms of, you know, really not having that many uh, games on film this year, uh, just where did you feel like you guys best found uh, where he fit in terms of your board and just how many, you know, much like the case with uh, Clyde last night, was, was Willie um, the top guy on your board despite some of the other linebackers maybe being available ahead of you guys? Um, you talking about round two? Well, like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. yeah, no, Willie was a, Willie was one of the top guys on the board, period. And again, it was, um, you know, I, I think it was a little bit of good fortune that, you know, he didn't play a full season because, I mean, I mean, you, you all saw his combine numbers. If you guys go back and watch the 2018 game versus Iowa, we played some Sam linebacker on the line and watch what he did against Iowa in 2018, watch what he did with, against Alabama in 2018, the bowl game in 2019 versus Louisville. Um, some choppy segmented tape because he was in and out of the lineup this year. But when you start stringing together some of these games and then you put together, um, you know, the, the combine work and, and, and the numbers and you see it on tape. And I think Coach mentioned a chance to talk to Coach Dan Mullen. And Dan Mullen thought he could have been a Heisman candidate as a, as a running back. He was that good in high school, that kind of athlete. So, uh, I mean, this is a, it's a rare talent here. And, I mean, he's going to be he's going to be a guy that will need some, um, you know, he just hadn't played a lot of football. So there'll be some – um, technical aspects he has to work on, and, and certainly at this at this stage, um, just learning how to, to come in and, and, and process the game and, and uh, Monday through Friday. But um, that's why you bring in guys like Tyron Matthew. I mean, you know, those guys are, are the glue guys. And he's going to come in and show them how how it's done. Guy like him, guy like Anthony Hitchens, and and you know, this guy loves to play, and he's he's right the white right way I know another thing too when we were going through our, our notes talking about Willie Gay when he was going through that suspension um you know how you handle that that adversity and, and the coaches said that he was completely unblockable on, on the practice team you know couldn't play uh, a lot of guys could pal could soul and and you know how you handle that they said that he just showed up like he was ready to play Alabama uh, when he knew he wasn't playing uh, just couldn't block them. And, and again, that, that type of stuff matters to us. That's why we signed the Badger last year and Frank Clark last year. So, um, you know, again, we're looking forward to having him, him here. All right, Vahe, we're going to go to you. Thanks, Brett. Hey, Brett. Um, just uh, it, it looks like you've added a couple of dynamic parts, certainly does. But I, I'm curious, just in a little bigger picture sense, with so much flux all around and, and – all the continuity you guys have, whether it's coordinators coming back, 20 of 22 starters, your, your staff, how well equipped do you feel um, you guys are for perhaps a, a shortened, certainly a kind of cut off off season, but perhaps even a shortened regular season? Do you, do you feel like you're sort of built pretty nimbly for that with, with all that? Well, yeah, I mean, certainly when you have a chance to re return so many players and, and have a, a coaching staff uh, uh, stay together and, and, had a group that went through a long season and uh, played right through through February. Um, you know, we'll see what happens moving forward. But I think it certainly plays in your favor for, um, you know, the continuity and, and knowing the playbook and knowing what's expected. And whenever we get back in, in, into the swing of things with camp, whether it be um, shortened or whether we start at the original start date, uh, I think guys just knowing how things operate and, and knowing the terminology in the playbook, I, I don't see how it could be a disadvantage. I, I think it would certainly put us in a good position here. So, um, you know, we're certainly looking forward to that. And um, hopefully we get this thing started on time. But I, I think that uh, the guys are ready to go and, and we'll be in a good position this year to have a chance to repeat. All right, guys, we probably have time for a few more. So we'll go Pete Sweeney, Matt, Derek, and Herbie. Go ahead, Pete. Um, <clears throat> Hi, Brett. Uh, I had Thanks. two, just one I wanted to ask you about Clyde and then Willie. Uh, mm -hmm. First thing on Clyde. Uh, you as a up and coming personnel man, whether it be with John or Andy, would always start harassing, not harass, like in a good way, uh, wearing them out about certain players. At what point was that um, for you with Clyde? And then when it came to Willie, Andy had mentioned that you guys were sweating it out. So I was just wondering if you could bring us through what the virtual room was like as you were maybe waiting to take Willie tonight. So again, the moment for Clyde and then what happened with Willie tonight. Well, that's a good question. With with Clyde, I, yeah, I think the coaches and, and the staff got got off easy this year because we weren't in in the building together, so it wasn't uh, wasn't able to just pop down there and, and you know uh, harass them and knock on the door and, and um, keep keep wearing them out. But I mean, look, our our guys um, that had a chance to go in there uh, loved them. I mean, everybody loved this guy. This was what was an easy one for everybody to just jump on board with it. It was one of those things where from the moment you put them on, uh, you know, you always look at, I think we're all trained this way. You always look at the tag right away. So 
I remember the first time looking at the tag and thinking, all right, here we go, five seven running back. And then you watch him, you're like, wow. I mean, but um, it was like that from me to all the guys uh, in my personnel staff that watched him to our coaches. So it was really um, purely a, um, a, a joint effort in, in that we all, I think, as soon as you watch him on tape, fell in love with him. And then as far as Willie Gay, I mean, we, again, when had the chance this morning to get together with our staff and look at the board and look at the names, I mean, he was one of the guys right at the top of that list. And it was such a long wait. So I do give credit to my staff for, for helping me be patient. And um, you guys know I like to be aggressive, but there was, there was a lot of good players there and the numbers worked out. But, you know, once we got into that range where there was uh, four or five players and, and only three or four picks left, um, we just shut it down because we knew we had a chance to, to get uh, a player that we really liked. And, and Willie was obviously at the top of that list. So when, when he fell all the way to us at that pick, we were obviously extremely excited. Uh, go ahead, Matt Derrick. Hey, Brett, with, with Lucas, what do you feel like is projecting as his best natural position? And, and is he somebody that, you know, could maybe contribute immediately inside and then maybe later kick out the tackle? Or is he just strictly a tackle to you? Well, you know, I think right off the bat, he'll have a chance to, to kick in there and, and compete at guard. Uh, this will be, you know, you know Tavahe's sort of question earlier, this will be a challenge when you have – uh, a virtual off season and you know how much training camp do we have so I mean that will be a little bit of a challenge but you do like the fact that this guy is extremely smart intelligent uh, but I do think that let's just play it out that you know, we'll, we'll play best case scenario that we're able to start training camp on time I, I think that you'd see him pop right in there at, at, at guard and, and, and compete inside at guard and then um, probably you know how coach Heck does a great job of letting the guys work in uh, at guard with the ones and twos and then tackles a little with the threes. I think that's kind of what you'd see. You'd see him with the earlier groups at guard and then as a younger guy taking more reps with, with the second or third team as tackle, just have him bounce in and out. So, um, you know, you, you do hope you can get to training camp on time because you kind of need that on-field work for the young guys like this. But I, I certainly think he'd get thrown right in the mix there at guard. All right, Herbie, close us out. Hey, Brett, last week um, during your pre-draft presser, you, you had mentioned cornerback. You like the depth of the cornerback position in this draft. With, with three rounds in the, with, in the books, how important do you feel is it to come out of tomorrow with a quality cornerback? Yeah, I mean, listen, we'll, we'll certainly look at that. We, we also felt it was extremely important to get um, a 4'4 linebacker at 245 pounds and, and a guy that can potentially start at, at tackle and guard. Uh, but I think, you know, just across the board, just finding ways to improve our roster any way we can. And, you know, we'll, we'll be looking at corner and we'll be looking at obviously some D, D linemen and, and, and you can never have enough offensive linemen. But, I mean, to your point, I mean, it's certainly a thing that we look at, but, uh, you know, it doesn't mean that we're just going to, you know, turn our eye on, on other positions. And we felt that depth and, and speed and athleticism at, at linebacker would certainly need and, and certainly offensive line depth was a need. So, um, there's many different ways to attack this thing. And there's also, um, you know, the free agency period. We've had success with guys like Rashad Fenton, and then we made the trade for um, Shavarius Ward, who was an undrafted free agent. So there's talent out there, and, and you just have to keep your eyes open. And, and again, got to have a great personnel staff, which I have. So we'll, we'll certainly be uh, anxious to get this thing rolling tomorrow and, and try to add more, more talent on both sides.